You know, culture is, is never static. You just see a tremendous amount uh, of diversity. Elevating the idea of difference as being fundamental. To capture that mosaic, that rich mosaic. I think the best way to approach it is to demythologize the fact that Jewish culture was one thing. The UCLA Allen D. Levy Center for Jewish Studies supports research and teaching in all aspects of Jewish culture and civilization. What happens here at UCLA through the Levy Center is really unique. I think of the center as a hub of activity, of intellectual activity. Um, open to the community and to students. The center does support a lot of research from different angles, different subjects. I think to do the kind of work that faculty alone wouldn't be able to pull off. LA is its own chapter in that uh, unfolding story uh, of the book of Jewish cultural experiences. We're chronicling and capturing it in all of its dimensions at the center. I think one of the unique things about Jewish studies at UCLA is that we're located in a truly global metropolis. It cannot be a selfish LA residence. The idea is for us to take scholarship in some ways out of the ivory tower and bring it to the broader public. Engagement with the community is really part and parcel of our academic mission. Education is a lifelong process. You always have more to learn. I think the Jewish study program has been a vibrant program. What we're being able to do is, is now is being able to expand it and grow it. Philanthropy has allowed the center to support innovative new research. I think growing is what sustains me at least, and I think sustains people. The Levy Center really provides uh, a, a great platform for all sorts of research projects. There are so many positive stories that to tell. People coexisted and, and found ways to share a space, to share a city. I link it to LA. An archive is a collection of material that allows us to tell untold stories. There's a way in which Sephardic history represents not just a, a piece of Jewish history, but a cross-section of global history. This is not a history that's been canonized, or it's only becoming canonized right now. The center has provided me with grants and fellowships that have allowed me to take the time to do the in-depth research that I have been able to do. For us to get the best students in any of our programs, it requires a lot of support. As I always say in the classroom, you know, my goal is I want to expand the students' playlist. But I guess I'm really trying to shape the heart as much as I'm trying to shape the mind. stories of, of regions, of cities, of nations, of empires, but also stories of individual people. It's that sense of making history relevant that I think is the, the ultimate win. The Bearing Witness program, their students have the opportunity to interview Holocaust survivors and really, over the course of the quarter, get to know them uh, personally. This learning about a historical event where many people didn't speak out is also something that speaks to uh, their own uh, value making, their own way of becoming, quite honestly, an adult. To have a structure that stimulates conversation, to have that institutional support, and the close ties with the community make it so much sweeter. I think people will see that we're also interested in what happened outside the classroom.
because at the end of the day, we are training these kids to go at some point and make an impact in the real world. I spent the past three days in Boyle Heights. Boyle Heights in 1930. They advocated for the poor, the downtrodden, people who are excluded. The values of humanity, the values of humaneness and compassion, I can't imagine they can be more important at this moment. The past matters, and just as much the future matters. I really believe that we can shape it here. We have to shape it here. We have to.